And we are going to have a casual conversation about marketing, communication, and building communities. Again, we'd like to make it very informal. If you ha happen to have a question, you can just shout it or just raise your hands. And the same, the same goes for you. So I'd like to begin now. Have some water first. That's a good idea. Or is it just <laughs> like, you know, still water? So we'll begin with uh, with like quick blast questions. So I'll I, I'll ask you three questions, and you'll you'll answer just with one word. Since we are we're going to talk about marketing and communication, I'd like to know if you have a favorite social media like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Yeah, it will be more Instagram. Okay, that yeah. was more than one word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Carolina. Yeah, um, I would say Instagram as well. Cool. Yeah, um, first time I use uh, Facebook, but nowadays more Instagram. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah Facebook uh, a little bit and more Instagram as well. Good. Yeah, Instagram. Two. Uh, if you... Say again? No, one word. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the only one. <laughs> well, you need to get me a glass of wine for that. Yeah. Uh, second question. Things you that makes a cafe stand out when you travel, when you explore, when you get inspiration on your travels? Is it the taste, the authenticity, or the overall experience you get as a hospitality? Is it something that you consider the most important factor? Uh, in my opinion, it's a group of everything. You know, you have the taste, mm -hmm. uh, but also the, the hospitality. It's everything you said, you know, it, it without one part of, of this, you know, you can't, you can't serve properly. You have to talk about, uh, explain any story about mm -hmm. your product. So you need to, to explain perfectly what, what is going on and what you can find in the cup. So okay. Yeah. Good. Definitely. It's all, uh, all about that. Right. And just one. I would say that as well. I think it's a balance um, to when you open, um, enter a coffee shop, you're kind of seeking to to a new experience you're open mm -hmm. so you you're very open to what they they can give you but uh, basically hospitality is very important to mm -hmm. connect with the customer um and uh, kind of ask questions you know like when they ask you what kind of coffee do you like that's very important because they they're going right to the point yep. uh, to serving you what you're looking for directly so i think it's it's a combination of everything the taste uh, the branding, the staff friendliness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, not quite similar. Right? And just saying about coffee. Yeah, of course that is tasty. But uh, we are talking about cafe. Yeah, cafe is more about coffee and coffee and barista should have uh, hospitality. And so my philosophy of cafe is this, uh, customer should satisfy that area. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. So total thing is a uh, composition of a cafe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I agree with the, the other guys. Um, of course, the taste is important. Uh, but when you go to a place that uh, have a good experience and nice hospitality, you can relevate some you know, uh, uh, um, beverage issues. And so uh, it's a, a kind of um, uh, all of those. Mm -hmm. aspects, but I, I believe the hospitality and experience is very important. Right, good. Yeah, for me, service is service. important. I remember service when people are great at hospitality and authenticity. I'm looking for someone who has put thought into the concept. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, this, this happens quite often with especially coffee baristas that they sometimes forget that they they are serving coffee to actual human beings in front of them <laughs> in the coffee shop so they <laughs> might need to be polite and uh, yeah so uh, before we move to like the main question areas i'll give you brief introduction to everyone who's sitting on this panel as as always you can find all the other details in the smartphone app that i hope you'll download it uh, so we have sitting here Pierre Guerin from France. He is the owner of Café Piha, roastery in a coffee shop, and Probert sales representative in yeah. the French market. Yeah. Uh, after discovering the world of coffee as a barista in various coffee shops in New Zealand, of course, uh, he became head roaster at Maxi Café in France. Yeah. And, uh, where, and then he built a complete roastery from scratch and used the shop roaster Probert on a 12 and 25. Yeah, definitely. 
then we have Carolina Gutierrez, originally from uh, Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, she's been in the industry in the, in the UAE in Dubai for the last five years. Carolina uh, started a, a coffee company, Goldbox Robustry, with, uh, with two of her friends. Uh, they became one of the pioneers of specialty coffee in the city, right? Uh, then you la la later you joined um, the company as a production manager in Abu Dhabi. And uh, now Carolina works as a freelance uh, curator consultant. Uh, then we have Yingo, uh, Yin Ho Yang. Uh, he's the CEO of El Cafe yeah. in Korea, uh, which he founded in 2010. Uh, in 2012 and 2011, uh, he held the position of director of Specialty Coffee Association of Korea. Yeah. Then we have Luis Eduardo Numello. Luis is the co-founder of Supernova Coffee Roasters from Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the most innovative coffee businesses in Brazil today in, in Curitiba, Sao Paulo. And, uh, and a well-respected roaster all around South America. Uh, he's also an SCA certified roaster as, and a sensory specialist and an authorized SCA trainer. And then we have Ralph Ruler, uh, my good friend and uh, one of the pioneers of specialty coffee in Berlin. He started his, uh, his company, The Barn Coffee Roasters, in 2010. And he now has three <coughs> shops, opening up a new one very soon. Uh, a roastery, international wholesale, and is the leading figures in the in the world of coffee roasting and at least in Europe and <coughs> worldwide. So please big applause for everyone here. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. <coughs> so I I really hope that the the response to my first question, like if there is anything particular that you find most important while visiting coffee shops, if there's anything particular that stands out, I kinda hope that you will respond that it's it's a mixture of everything, and most importantly, it's hospitality and it's service. Yeah. So uh, you gave me the right answer, so thanks for that. <laughs> uh, the reason I, why I like the, the people in this panel is that we have a great combination of a person from France, Dubai, Korea, Brazil, and Berlin. So we have, we have different opportunities to look at marketing and communication and building communities in different regions and from different perspectives. So for the beginning, I'd like to hear maybe your story, like what were your first days when you started your companies and when you started to build the communities from scratch? How was it to, how was it to start in France, Pierre? Uh, it was not so easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I start uh, to build my roster. It was two, around two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I learned how to make coffee 10 years ago. But the thing is, uh, as Tim could explain before, you know, it was quite hard to learn how to make coffee when your father is not a roaster yep. or you, you are not in, in this scene. So this everything began with a trip in New Zealand mm -hmm. and how to learn how to speak English. Mm -hmm. But uh, the best is uh, when you're talking with customers. And so this is how I start to learn the, mm -hmm. the, the job as a barista. And then I came back in Paris and I could help on different opening, different coffee shop. And the thing is, I always love to travel and how to you can travel, uh, you can learn how to roast and then you have to go to the origin and to yeah. understand where everything is coming from. So the beans. And then I try to find a way to create my own thing. And so, as you said, I had different experiences in coffee shop and I was looking for a roastery and so I found an amazing web shop company who were loaded of money but uh, looking for ideas and okay. uh, I was lucky enough to be the guy and so I could have my experiences on building a roastery from scratch and then I could save some money and doing my own one so I found an old print shop right in the middle of uh, Bordeaux mm -hmm. and the coffee scene was quite growing a little bit with uh, two or three coffee shops, one roaster which, uh, which is a friend and, uh, and I thought I could, uh, I could build it, my roaster and my coffee shop in three months but uh, I needed 
around eight months. And uh, with then you then you found out of about European law. Yeah, everything. Yeah, uh, but um, I was also really lucky because during this time, uh, I had a call from uh, Jens from Probat, mm -hmm. uh, who were looking for a new solution on distribution uh, distribution and agency in France, and he had the idea to ask to a roster to be part of this project because in his mind he thought that who can be uh, a roster can be the best person to advise and another roster to choose which machine and and also to for the setup mm -hmm. and so i for sure i say yes how could i, how could I say no on this and uh, and we start um, doing this all together and it works pretty well and at the same time I could I could build finish to build my roastery and my coffee shop. And at least you need a year, you know, but uh, to find regular customers and and to to be on your on what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. But uh, every time people come in, in the shop it was always, you know, with a smile. And when a person come and you can see this person coming ag coming again and again and enjoying coffee. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's the best thing it can happen to you. Oh yeah, yeah. and es especially in France, it's it's really exciting to see the the growth of, of specialty coffee in the country. Yeah, because like you as like you as a country, you have a perfect taste for good quality wine, good cheese, good food and cuisine. But up until a few years back. Like yeah. the coffee just sucked a lot. Uh, we c so we uh, can't be good on everything. Good, good you job. Know. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was it? How was it in Dubai when uh, when you started? Uh, in Dubai, when I came, there wasn't really many specialty coffee shops. I would say it was zero. Uh, okay. You did have a big. It's not a lot. Yeah. It's <laughs> not a lot. Uh, there was a big a big company who was roasting for commercial, um, and then you did have a company who was focusing on organic. 100% fair trade. Um, so that's mm -hmm. that's wh when I started working as a barista. Okay. Um, and, and it's kind of where my passion grew. Yep. Um, I come from Venezuela, so we do have coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so m my inspiration was kind of like my mother. Uh, she drinks coffee every day, breakfast. Um, so when I came to Dubai and, and actually uh, drank, I was very like uh, open to the idea. Hey, you know, I didn't know it grew in trees, uh, and I also met the owner. She was very passionate, uh, explaining about specialty coffee. So I think my passion kind of grew there. Uh, so I started working as a barista, passionate, um, and in the first three months I had to um, um, learn about calibrating a machine. Um, we were doing cupping sessions, but my palate uh, sensory skills were zero. So like I had lots of help from my colleagues. So I think from there, like it was definitely a good starting point. Um, and then I, I grew more curious mm -hmm. because I wanted more information about the coffee. I wanted to know the altitude, the variety, the processing, uh, but I would say like the, the starting point in UAE was kind of like a bit closed. They didn't like to give too much information. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I, I had an opportunity to have my own business uh, with two other friends. Mm -hmm. um, so we started from ground zero, uh, looking for a location. And uh, you're still friends. We're still friends, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and I started uh, roasting in a probat, 12 kilos. Mm -hmm. So from there, I, I came to Emirates to uh, learn about uh, how they fabricate the machines, how it works. Uh, so when I reached back to Dubai, it was uh, approaching customers that I knew um, they they were coffee consumers and kind of the interactional um, that we were having a new company that uh, we were going to start roasting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the UAE community, they're very coffee um, oriented, they, they already drink coffee, they're coffee Sorry. consumers, mm. so when we set up a company, I think they were already craving for this new concept of specialty coffee, mm -hmm. and since the, the market does have um, money um, to pay for specialty, um, mm -hmm. I think when they um, went to, the, to, the, to my company, um, we approached them very passionately and like explained uh, where specialty coffee came from, what was the difference uh, with commercial coffee, and uh, we hosted cupping sessions. Um, yep. We did um, 
educational um, um, with the SEA about barista, introduction to coffee, roasting, sensory. So we also mm -hmm. uh, gave education um, to the community also so they know that was the importance of specialty coffee. I like what you said that you, you grew professionally with your company as on the go. Yeah. And I think that the customer base grew along with you. Yes. That was, how was it? I was in Korea and back in 2010. Uh, 2010. Uh, actually, I do not drink coffee because. Uh, you did not, okay? Yeah, because coffee is not tasty. <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh, someday I drink some coffee and that uh -huh. is tasty, really nice, and I try other coffees. And I travel in all over the Korea. At that time in Korea, just around 100 roasters. <laughs> Just yeah, nowadays you cannot imagine. Yeah, so I can travel all over the roster. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I, I travel in all over the rosters and I realize I cannot drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is why I start roasting. And so you had to do it yourself. Yeah, if they do that's, not give That's a good reason. I should do it. That's a good yeah. <laughs> so I try to roast it and I realized another thing. My coffee was not delicious. So. <laughs> Uh, I try to why my coffee is not delicious, and I figure out green bean is a difference. So, how should I get the good green bean? Yeah, I should growing more consumption. So I open my shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is my story. And uh, when I open my shop, and um, other roasters coming my shop, and they talk. Did they me, like it? No, they didn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> they talk me. Your roasting is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, your roasting is uh, uh, below second grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is not uh, roasted. Yeah, <laughs> that time, yeah, that kind of season. So but you didn't listen to them. Yeah, they didn't like me, and you're wrong. You roasting terrible, and oh, uh, if they time someone roasting like me, yeah, I didn't roasting, and I'm doing a coffee job. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going there to just drink, drink coffee and. Uh, so that time in Korea is just the starting time about specialty coffee. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and first time I really impressive thing was uh, I get the uh, ocean the cup of excellence first time and that is so delicious. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is my very impression about coffee. Yeah. And I eager to go to farm to get the more better quality green beans and I'm doing that is uh, progressing. And first time I opened my shop, that is really small. And uh, I have, at that time I have uh, seven grinder, but chair for customer is just four. <laughs> seven grinders and four chairs for four customers. Yeah, <laughs> so oh, wow, more that's, that's machine so than customer and that is a really nice place for me to study coffee. Yeah. yeah, I remember the first time I went to Korea was for the for the World Barista Championship last year, and my impression was that you get the same kind of espresso bars as you find in New York or in London, but just with four floors mm. and five times bigger. Yeah, it was so so impressive, so yeah. impressive how the community grew over the yeah. just a couple of years. Um, but my one is really small. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You'll, you'll yeah. get some floors eventually. Yeah. <laughs> how was Brazil today and how was it when you started? Yes, um, well, first of all, I'd just like to thank uh, Robert for the invitation. This is an amazing event and a very special moment for, for, for Brazil. The Brazilian market is changing a lot. The specialty coffee is growing fast and during the, 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 the recent years. And then I'll try to, to summarize my my, my my story my history in, in coffee, but um, I started to drink um, uh, specialty coffee only 13 years ago, uh, when uh, one of the first pioneers in uh, Brazil, uh, Luca and Georgia and Luis started. They are here. Uh, they started the business in Curitiba, and that's why our city is very known about uh, the the specialty scene, the specialty coffee scene. And then uh, I started to drink the uh, drink coffee that um, even the Brazil, it's the, a big consumer, uh, only 3% is a uh, specialty that we, uh, we drink uh, nowadays. So 
most of the, my life I didn't uh, realize that coffee really tastes, you know. So when I started to drink uh, specialty, it changed my, my, my behavior and my relationship with the, the beverage. And I started to find uh, to every place I, uh, I, would, I would go, and I was traveling uh, around the world, trying to find uh, new places, uh, trying to find coffee, and specialty coffee places. And then I was uh, thinking, why do we don't have this kind of uh, business in Brazil? Uh, and most of the time, I, I, I thought it was because of the culture. Because the culture is so different. We are not used to drink uh, specialty uh, food or specialty mm -hmm. beverage, you know. Um, for the majority of the, per the, the, the population, uh, this is not um, their uh, reality. So, uh, when five years ago, uh, I started to, um, uh, I had that opportunity to get in contact with the, the, the coffee in Tanzania and in Kenya. Mm -hmm. and it's funny because uh, my first, the first time I, s I, s I saw, I see, I saw a, a coffee tree, it was in, in Kenya. <laughs> it was not in Brazil. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's, it's a long story, but it, uh, maybe in another opportunity. But anyway. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> it's, a fun, it's a interesting just. But anyways, um, when I come back to Brazil, uh, me and my friend uh, Bruno, we uh, were discussing why we, don't, we can try to make a, 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 a business uh, in Brazil uh, in the coffee market. But uh, with a new concept, a different concept that we are used to have in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, in Curitiba, we have great coffee shops. Uh, Lucas is still one of the, the, the greatest in, in our country. And we had to try to, to find a new approach. So we started our first uh, shop, and roasting uh, site, and, and we, don't, we don't have a service uh, at the, the table. People come to the counter and, and order to the baristas. And we don't have Wi-Fi. Okay, I know it's a hipster thing, but we try to do something different that the other uh, coffee shop they have uh, in the, the nice uh, area of the city. And when uh, we were uh, planning the business, we were discussing with some friends. They said, oh, you're crazy, man. They're doing this. You, you break down in a few months because nobody will go to the, the, the shop because it's completely different from what we are used to. Yeah. But I said, okay, uh, let's try it, then you can make some you know, adjustments later. And then we opened uh, three years ago, and we're doing so well that we just opened our shop in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. We have four shops in Curitiba, mm -hmm. and I think we're doing well. We, we started a um, uh, um, uh, relationship with the producers, uh, with the customers, and a kind of a different approach that you were, people are used to. So. Um, we have a lot of challenges. It was still growing the, the coffee scene in Brazil, um, but I, I know um, we had to try to uh, find the strategies mm -hmm. to reach the the, the people. The 97% uh, of the, the 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 market that, that they, they don't drink uh, they don't drink uh, especially. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Ralph? You you were in the finance, working in Japan in London for yes. a long time. Then you got into coffee. How was Berlin back in the days? Um, uh, it's interesting that you distinguish Berlin out of uh, Germany and keep it separate. Yeah. I think there's <laughs> some value in that. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> we benefit from a lot of international people liking the city, not only mm -hmm. the discotheques, but also you know the coffee culture and um, yeah, Berlin as an as an experience. So I think there's huge benefit in that. Um, I think yeah, when I started. I felt, for me, it was a career change, and I was looking for something I felt passionate about, and that's what I'm hearing here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you feel very strongly about something, then you can also sell it really well. It's like a good cook who is really proud of the best meat or egg or, and so on, and they serve it with confidence. A lot of people will come because they feel the energy and the, the, the mm -hmm. passion, and ho hopefully profitable as well. Um, and, but I feel a specialty coffee is an opportunity uh, to build premium. I, I feel very strongly about not replicating what's already there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't do blends, we don't do cheap coffees and so on, because I feel like you fall into the trap of um, entering a, a relationship on pricing and then you can't really work with farmers and pay up for quality because you're kind of like squeezing yourself at the, the two ends. So I feel um, that 
is also always my advice. I said earlier, authenticity is really important. Um, specialty coffee, um, uh, for me, is I feel like a specialist. I feel uh, as a specialist, I don't need to please everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to uh, have a huge range. Uh, I can have a different concept that also uh, presents the, c the quality that I'm serving uh, at, at the front end, the, the type of service also. Um, uh, and um, I feel then also people can read you a lot better. I think the marketplace will be a lot more interesting if we had more individual concepts um, and, 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 and then it's more fun walking down a high street and it's not always like every city looks the same and you mm -hmm. have this and this and this and it's like ch chains. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but it has to be more natural and authentic. Yeah. It has to be personalized. I think so. And then people can decide, look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going into this concept, I'm going into that one, I feel happy in this room, um, I don't like laptops around, so I want to like engage with people, so I go into your spot and I feel like there's more of a, an energy between people in this space and not in cyberspace. Um, so I think like it, it has to be specific, but it can be, uh, like it's a big market, it can be very, very different things. Mm -hmm. But uh, when when we started in 2010, there was no good co coffee quality in I didn't feel in Berlin or in, in in Germany. Not that level of traceability and and quality uh, that I was looking for, and the type of roast and so on. So mm -hmm. I um, immediately turned to the outside to markets that were um, uh, culturally a lot more developed in terms of coffee. So mm -hmm. I visited Tim and. Uh, other people that I felt like I can learn from and I can can look up to and mm -hmm. so they were kind of guiding me um, to that and but um, as far as Berlin is concerned I never looked at the market I felt like if I look at what other people are doing I, I just hear no 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 yeah. so I felt just focus on getting better and on serving better and 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 giving people a good uh, customer experience and be very clear and specific about what I'm doing and then, um, you know, that uh, the success will follow. I don't think copying over other mm. um, uh, uh, concepts uh, feels very individual or personal. And we talked about the emotional connection, the value in that and the community and the spots that you feel like you relate to. I think that um, is uh, an important part of our DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk about loyalty now. Because the uh, the market conditions in Dubai and Berlin are very different today than it used to be just a few years ago. So I'd like to talk about the, the difference between customer acquisition and customer retention. Like how do you how do you guys keep keep your current customers coming back for years, and how do you find new customers? And if you if you find in Berlin, for example, easier to get new audience interested or if it's easier for you to keep the current customers or in Dubai, in France, in Korea? Carolina? Yes, um, so I would say our current customers, it's basically building a relationship with them. Um, I think it, at the end of the day, we're, we're human. So when they come to a coffee shop, they also want to get to know um, mm -hmm. the barista and like uh, they want to be served the coffee every day in the same way. So kind of like offer them that experience that this is their home and like they're welcome anytime. Mm -hmm. When I see his face, I greet him with his name. I don't have to ask what coffee he wants. So that's kind of like maintain that relationship with the customer. And also in regards to like um, looking for new customers w would be um, looking for new innovative ideas, um, hosting events, uh, cuppings, bringing other international uh, coffee um, people um, to the community. So kind of like uh, thinking of new ideas, um, something new, something different. Right. Um, so you can also have new, new customers coming in, mm -hmm. um, keeping up with social media, yeah. Do, do you have any, any concrete examples of, of what you did? Like giving away a free cheesecake after <laughs> 10th visit or uh Yes. Um, so you're doing that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did lots of events also in the beginning um, just to, to build a name in the market. Um, even though we weren't making money, uh, we did events all around um, Dubai for the first 
whole year. Mm -hmm. um, I would say on the second year, we kind of already had people uh, talking about the company. So like it was much easier. Um, after doing so many events, um, th they started coming in and, you know, we started building a relationship and from there, kind of like people were coming in by themselves and that was our opportunity to kind of like build a strong re relationship and then come up with new ideas mm -hmm. to get more customers. So you knew it at the beginning that you're in this for the long run and even though the first year will be more difficult, you need to invest for, for the events and communication and will pay off eventually. Yes. What about such saturated market as, as Berlin today? Is it? <laughs> I think so. I don't think so. <laughs> really? No. I mean, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, there is a certain element of coolness and trendiness in Berlin that, uh, like, you also have to admit that you have really well done branding and everyone knows the barn and everyone knows the interior design. It's It's like so many people copied you around the world so i was just i was just curious like if if the first customers that you got are, or the the customers the regulars that you have now if they keep coming back because it's it's trendy and it's it's like they feel they like to see and be seen in the place or if not um so multiple layers yeah question the, the first of all i think like um, berlin is very trendy on the eastern rim and the west is wide so it has huge potential, but it's also a city that is very spread out. So there's not the density of things you have in a mall in Dubai or in London where like one million people are passing your shop uh, in the mm -hmm. morning. So sometimes our streets are like really, really empty. empty. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of also like to build a business there, you know, at, uh, I feel like you, there's like only a few spots that, 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 that work. And, uh, in that, it is really important to keep it authentic and keep it individual, so people are really drawn to you. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel in terms of um, Berlin is a brunch place, mm -hmm. I feel. There's a lot of Australian brunch type place. concepts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The coffee quality is a lot better than what we had before, but um, there is a lot of room for people that are delivering excellence. We don't have that many of that. Um, I also feel <coughs> that the market right now is dividing into two parts. Uh, one is Instagrammable, uh, beautiful yeah. shops, and the other one is um, people that are focusing on content. And mm -hmm. so I'm more in that group. I really feel that the, it's all about like the product, the farmer, the bean, the roasting, the presentation, and then of course the people coming in to enjoy that. But they should be drawn to the product quality mm -hmm. that you know, the neighbor doesn't have, and not to uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the cup with the dots, or the music, or the sexy barista. Um, that's another element, but that should be like secondary for me. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of room for more content, and uh, that's also kind of where I feel my mission to really encourage people to focus on that, so people are coming for the right reason, and then they stick more. Uh, on top of that, in Berlin, we have a layer of coffee, uh, coffee hoppers. So, what, what, what is that? That p uh, travelers that are coming to Berlin and they're really like Just um, around coffee checking shop. out different coffee shops. So it's kind of like good to have a lot more variety in town. I think it's like helpful, spreading the word and also getting different like levels of quality and experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah. I, I feel that in that in that sense we are benefiting, but generally speaking, earlier I talked about Berlin and Germany being different. It only takes like one strong person, one passionate person, even in Minden or Freiburg or Osnabrück or somewhere, to really be um, passionate and uh, authentic, and then they will be successful. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really being truthful, and. Um, engaging people through your passion and then it you can be off in a small town and to be honest with you 80 percent of my drinks are milk drinks there's no discussion about flavor or taste you know <laughs> for it to be like too acidic or to be like different mm -hmm. you know like there's a very sh small percentage of people that are j drinking like straight up espressos mm -hmm. so if i have great milk and i have a great coffee I have nothing to fear, you know, and I, I'm probably cheaper than Starbucks, so 
Uh, you should there should be a lot more shots. Some caramel in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, no, we don't work with the sugar addiction, but um, our milk is pretty <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I like the what, what you said about content, and it reminded me of uh, Rick's presentation, that the, that the quality of the content, that's, that's what ultimately mm -hmm. triggers the, the emotional relationship of the customer, a long-term relationship of the customer with the shop. So you did that in France, in Bordeaux. It wasn't particularly a coffee city. Everyone knows Bordeaux for wine. Yeah. So, but first I totally agree with you. So when you go to Berlin, you go to b the Bergen to, to party a lot, and then yeah. you go to the barn to drink a, a good coffee. The next morning. Yeah, the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bordeaux, so I'm quite lucky because Bordeaux is different than Paris. So uh, as you know, Bordeaux is quite a small city. Mm -hmm. Now we are maybe three or four rosters, specialty coffee rosters maybe six or seven coffee shops mm -hmm. around me. I've got maybe four coffee shops mm -hmm. and uh, I'm still okay. And uh, everybody has his own customers. My customers go to, to the other place. And it's great because they can discover other origin, other roaster, other way of roasting. Uh, so, um, so I think it's more benefit mm -hmm. uh, than something else. And we group, we try to group together to organize cupping events and whatever to be stronger. And we want more, uh, I think you have to split two kinds of customers. So the customers of your coffee shop mm -hmm. and your customers as a roster. So it's not the same thing. Right. If you wanna, if you wanna keep and if you wanna continue to respect your customers and your coffee shop, we already talk about everything you have to do, but if they come to your place, it's because um, this place look like who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, because we talked about the producer, he's a person, and you have to respect the producer, but also yourself. You know, you you give everything, you give your body and your and everything in your project, and if you do it well and if you are respectful, I think you know it's it's matching. On the on the other side, and then you have the customer, but the professional customer, which is different. And as I told you, the other roster, we are we are a group, so we try not to get the customer of the other one, because in Bordeaux at this time we have plenty of room. Mm -hmm. You said that maybe in the wine we we are pretty good, but in coffee, the thing is it's more um, and it's not negative, but mainly industrial who has the power to provide machine services and everything that an office, a restaurant or an hotel needs. And now, you know, with more and more organization, a professional web services and everything, we, we, we start getting some of their customer. And, and when you've done that, it's, it's really, you know, it's a, you can open a bottle of champagne because you are really happy with that because you know that this customer maybe will swap with another specialty coffee roaster, but he won't come co go back to a, a lower quality coffee. Mm -hmm. The thing is, so in France, chef, um, star Michelin chef, or uh, whatever, which restaurant you go, you know, they always uh, give you a story on what they had, you know, the cheese, the food, the, 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 the meat. And, and, and the wine, it's easy because you just need to leave Bordeaux and you will see what is, uh, what is a, a, a castle and how the resin come from and where the wine come from and everything, every process. Coffee is different. It's on the other part of the world. So you have to create a, a story and an history and explain what is going on, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's easy because mainly the coffee is coming from wonderful countries and, and you are not only talking about the product, but you are like also- Brazil. Yeah, Brazil, Venezuela, and, uh, and other parts. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, and, uh, and when you, you start talking like that and, and explaining this, you know, they, they start understanding that, yeah, a coffee, is not bitterness, weak, and you add sugar in. You know, it's different. You are talking about varieties, you are talking about processes, 
you're talking about citric acidity and, and other things. And now I can do a nice uh, 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 comparison mm -hmm. between wine and coffee. And we do a, a free co a cupping session every week. And Manu is here. He's coming quite uh, every week over there. So it's quite fun. And lots of people is coming because they are, they are happy to discover that coffee is not one test. Coffee, yeah. you know, it's it can actually have a taste. Oh. And really great. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's good. And, and after you remember oh. that, because as I told you, you know, I remember, I still remember my uh, wash geisha from Panama. I drank it at your place uh, six, year ago, six, years, uh, six years ago. You know, it was the first time I tried it. And so, you know, you remember. And this is what I want to give to some of my customers. You know, to come by you know, in about two years and say, oh, look, mate, your espresso, I still have it in my mind. Yeah. I think this is the main goal. Yeah. Is the, uh, I wonder that for you, Louise, in, in Brazil, is the element of traceability and the, the understanding of the whole supply chain that like, Brazilians, they live in a, one of the biggest producing countries in the world. Is that the, the fact that coffee is being grown there was that helpful for you when you started, that they could understand the value of specialty coffee? Uh, it's not an easy uh, question. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because um, even though it's um, so easy to get into the farm uh, from Curitiba, it's uh, three hours driving. But you still went to Kenya first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, oh. I'm stupid. Well, anyways, um, yeah, you can buy a buy a, um four or five bags um, you can put in a trunk of a car and come to your, your roaster. So, of course, it's uh, that, that part of, uh, uh, of the relationship, the part of the reason being an uh, origin country, it's a, it's a good thing. Because uh, it's easier to, to get close to the farmers and the producers. And, but uh, the, uh, the other side, it's that uh, people, uh, they think that what they are drinking is uh, real coffee. Um, and because they remember when they, oh, when I was a kid, my grandma used to roast their own coffee. It tastes this almost the same, yeah. um, and they they think they are drinking a good um, a product, but it's not. So um, for me, I, I believe it's one of our biggest challenges. Uh, that's why you have to uh, break some walls, break some you know uh, barriers that you um, have. And um, one shop, one shop that we have, uh, we don't have a fixed price. It's uh, located in a uh, low-income area of the city. You don't and have a fixed price. Yeah, yeah. The customer can pay whatever <laughs> they they want or whatever they they can pay for the coffee, and and getting uh, we, we are getting uh, a good success because uh, now people that they don't have the um, the price barrier, the the, the price you know. Uh, so now they can pay to drink a good coffee, to drink specialty coffee. It's uh, more accessible for um, for um, uh, for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I believe that you have to um, create uh, good strategies to break the walls and come closer to the customers. And for an uh, origin country, it's very hard to to do this. And especially because we are um, a, a third world country, we. I saw the Rick's um, uh, graphic, mm -hmm. and we have more people at the, the low income uh, part of the, the, of the graphic. So um, it's not as a mature uh, market as um, Germany, that people are used to drink good things. They just can choose uh, the barn or, or, or Five Elephant or other shop. They, they, have good, um, uh, they have access to good uh, coffee. And for us, it's very challenging because you know we have to um, try to make those people uh, get more closer to um, mm -hmm. to the, the, the coffee shop, the, the, the coffee specialty coffee. So um, it's hard to to give you one specific answer about it. And was that was also your case that once once your customers like once they got in. They will never get out. Like, did you need to work a lot with educations, giving lectures, and doing cuppings? Yeah. Um, uh, again, it was rough said, and, and um, when you have um, um, a, a, a place, you have a business that you have personality, 
and people recognize you as a, a, a quality place, a, a specialty, a specialized place. Um, and and they, 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 when they drink the coffee for the first time, mm -hmm. um, if they are not used to drink specialty, uh, they can come back to the commercial. Because the, the first impression, it's so positive and that they can't um, drink uh, bad coffee again. And they, they don't, uh, the reaction is not the same that they are used mm -hmm. to, you know. Um, and th that's why I, I believe to, for us, for our uh, reality, that to retain customers, it's a kind of easier than to get more uh, new customers. Because mm -hmm. you have to do a lot of education, uh, as I said, the, the, all the, the, the walls you have to, to remove, you know, uh, it's not only for the, the, the price, it's about the, the, the language we use to our customers. When they find someone that, it's not, um, uh, that they don't know about the coffee, mm -hmm. um, not the uh, aeropress, uh, uh, manual grinder, a lot, a lot of the, 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 the gadgets we have, uh, we can't start um, uh, delivering all the information you know, to them. You have to to um, to get a different approach to to the, that customer, so we have to um, think different. Uh, we have to we have to change our mind when related to um, a specialty, and, and especially uh, especially in, in uh, origin country as, as Brazil. Mm -hmm. What about in uh, in Korea? Do you know like what kind of customers you have, and how yeah. do you keep coming them back? Yeah, um, uh, Korean market is, uh, I think, uh, quite similar as Berlin. And yeah. nowadays, it is uh, someone drinking coffee, someone taking picture, <laughs> <laughs> Instagram coffee. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is a totally different market. And uh, someone who Instagram do not going my uh, cafe, and mm -hmm. someone who drink coffee are going my cafe, and that is a fortune. <laughs> and I think it is indeed uh, taking time to relationship with the uh, uh, customers. And as uh, we have relationship with the farmer, we need taking time. It is same as a customer. And I am moving two time my shop, mm -hmm. different area in Seoul. And every time I'm moving, I'm realize uh, people is not changing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just my customer is changing Absolutely. because uh, when I move uh, first time, uh, that is uh, milk beverage is most of my uh, shelling, and one or two year later, it became changing. Okay. Americano and green coffee is uh, more than milk beverage. Yeah, okay. so I realized that when I moving first time, I realized, and that time I think, yeah, now Korean customer is changing, and but I'm moving again. Oh, not changing. <laughs> Just my customer is changing. And it is a really interesting thing. And one of the interesting thing is uh, some of my customer asking, uh, this farm last year, year tastes like in this year. How about this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a really interesting question to me. And, and I'm trying to, my barista, uh, working as a coffee curator, and they trying to talk more to customer and finding what they are wanting. Mm -hmm. And we have a similar uh, choice of coffee. And if they cannot find something they don't like, and please explain what they are like and mm -hmm. sending the cafe. And uh, sometimes people asking, coffee tastes like Starbucks, but we cannot make it. Yeah, that is not my ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we sending to uh, kindly explain how to go to Starbucks nearby. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, you, do you have any specific city or country you, you travel for inspiration, like before you started, that you got a lot of ideas from? Uh, yeah, San Francisco. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I first started and I went to San Francisco, and oh, that is so awesome. And, and some coffee it inspired me a lot. And after I start coffee and I went to Nordic country, mm -hmm. oh, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that is so amazing. And, uh, oh, I agree. Yeah, so, and actually, I envy them. They make, uh, they have that kind of customer. Yeah, 
uh, we are uh, struggling with uh, customer and explain. And we had still hard time to why coffee taste is different, but they already had that kind of customer. So I'm really am envy about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now I'd like to hear the thoughts of all of you on the on the future trends and challenges you you expect to to see in the in the near future because uh, in the specialty coffee market or in the co coffee market in terms of consumption a lot of things are changing now you can see the uh, the big corporations and big companies see that the the future and the the trend setters are people like you and with the acquisitions of a number of brands in the United States and uh, new new concepts, Starbucks reserve roasteries and places like that, you see that they are improving day by day. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts, like what do you like what do you see yourself going in the in the next coming years and what trends you see in, in like in marketing about how to keep the customers coming back to your shops and uh, to your roasters. So uh, as you said and before I think with uh with the climate changing, you do, you do not know what will happen soon. Mm -hmm. So huge company now is trying to find a solution to get the customers who are ready to pay a high price for a coffee. Mm -hmm. So mainly it's our customers because they are involved in the specialty coffee. They, uh, they like qualities and the product. Right. So, as you said, you know, I'm the agent for Probat in France, and I'm lucky enough to meet a lot of roasters. Not only, you know, small roasters who are opening the shop, but also, you know, big roastery. Mm -hmm. And um, what I can see is uh, the industrial uh, start to replicate what we are doing. So mm -hmm. they try to train their employees to get diplomas, to mm -hmm. have baristas, to change their machine to improve the quality of the beans. So it means that uh, we do something great. And so in France, mainly this is what is happened. So last weekend, so and I finished yesterday morning, you had uh, the first event. So it not means a lot maybe for you, but for French people, it means a lot. So it's, a, it's not a competition, it's a diplomas. Mm -hmm. And it, the name is Meilleur Ouvrier de France. So it means that you, you will have the best chef, the best pastry chef, the best jewelry and everything. And so after you can have a flag on it and a big medal and, and <laughs> you, s you know that you are the one. And it's the first time it happened for the, uh, to get a moth, uh, but a coffee roaster mm -hmm. after 98 years. After 98 yeah, years. Okay. Yeah, because moth exists for 98 years. Mm -hmm. And so now we will have the first coffee roaster moth in France. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for it means a lot for us because it's a recognition of our work and what we are doing. And, you know, as we I talked before, you know, when you were talking about Alain Ducasse and Sophie Pic, this big chef with all star Michelin mm -hmm. and using big brand and, and their r restaurant. And now they are already thinking about, yeah, uh, I think coffee might be really important at mm -hmm. the end. Yeah, for sure. You know, you have the best starter, the best wine, the best main, but you will leave the restaurant with a shitty taste on your mouth. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something. I think. Mm -hmm. And um, and now, for example, Ducas, who has some restaurants everywhere, even in Dubai, is creating his roastery right in middle of Paris, mm -hmm. and buying new machine and using uh, new tools and everything. So. I think, yeah, the French market is, is ready and is moving a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and so I hope and I'm pretty sure that uh, more and more French customer will be educated and we will try to do our best to do it, but to, to make the difference between a regular coffee you can have on the motorway mm -hmm. and a great coffee you can, you can find in our place. Yep. So. And do do you see any specific trends in uh, in Brazil, Luis, in the in the coming the coming years? Yeah, <coughs> it's uh, interesting uh, that in Brazil we have a specialty market for uh, yeah almost 15 years, 
but only in the last three years, uh, people are really getting to the the the, the, the real specialty uh, coffee. Of course, we have a lot of um, espressos and capsule coffees, but um, uh, related to the, the 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 coffee out of home and the, the with the coffee shops, uh, we um, we seeing a new scene. Um, I, I think for the the the, the next. Uh, three or four years, we will we, we'll keep growing because um, it's very fresh for all of us. Um, the kind of thing that you that the people have in the U.S. for mm -hmm. uh, I don't know almost 20 years, the new concept of, of coffee, and so for us it's very um, recent. This uh, the the scene that we are having. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I I hope that um, then we can. As I said, uh, break the walls and come closer to the, the customers, and and I hope that um, we can get more people um, uh, being able to 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 drink a good uh, beverage, to drink to, to drink uh, good products, not only coffee. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe that um, can be a way. Uh, that, that that's why we're talk, uh, discussing uh, with the, them. Uh, about the, how the, the the good strategy that you can have, as you said in France, people are used to drink quality things. Maybe if you can, uh, I can say uh, in Brazil, we can get uh, we come closer to the the, the craft beer, uh, fine cacao, fine ca chocolate, uh, uh, other business like uh, specialty that are used to to to. To make specialty products, mm -hmm. maybe you can get more. You can get more customers uh, into the, the the specialty coffee market. Do you, <coughs> do you see in Berlin that people start to realize that they don't really care about tattoos and beards as as much as they did before, and more about quality? Um, I, I think taste goes through all ages and social ranks and we don't look at clothing or tattoos so i think like we get like a really good mix of old people also coming in and enjoying a nice hand brew in a nice quiet environment mm -hmm. and slow down i think what we will be focusing on is or are focusing on is uh, training our staff and service mm -hmm. and i also believe the companies that were taking over recently were like highly overpaid so they mm -hmm. can only go down in coffee quality or get the prices up and both is good for me okay that kind of makes sense <laughs> uh, you, yeah you worked in economics and finance i can see that <laughs> 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 how is dubai what trends you see in in marketing and new concept development well, um, I feel like now the, the, the coffee community is, is very evolved now. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, there are new specialty coffee shops, new specialty coffee roasteries. There's more people interested in coffee. So for us, um, I would say to stay in the game would be like to focus in uh, customer service and like uh, quality. Uh, at the end of the day, people do want to drink uh, good coffee. Mm -hmm. And also get a good customer service. So, and is it is it becoming now that uh, a lot of locals are moving back from abroad to open up their own small independent stores? Because I know that in Dubai and Qatar, there was a lot of chains and uh, rich holdings that just invested a whole bunch of money into into franchises that looked great in pictures, but yes. the quality and service wasn't that that yes. good. So do you think this is changing these days too? Yes, uh, there are definitely more local um, inspired uh, coffee shops with the owners uh, making coffee behind the bar. So yep. that is rare, but I can see it's definitely evolving. But yeah, mm -hmm. they're all now focusing on quality, customer service and like new different things um, to find their unique um, yep. style between other. Okay, yeah. okay. And in Korea, I guess, like artificial intelligence and robotics <laughs> and uh, <laughs> drones serving you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Next summer. Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> okay. And in Korea, I, I think a Korean coffee trend is a bit changing. And, and nowadays, uh, some big company is uh, trying to do coffee business. Uh, and as you saw, uh, Force Terror Coffee Shop. Y y yeah. Okay. yeah, whole building, they're using coffee shop. 
yeah. Yeah, something like that. And then bigger coffee shop. Uh-huh. Nowadays, many bigger coffee shop is opening. And, and even local franchise, they are opening specialty coffee shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure what is a specialty what to them, but mm-hmm. they are trying to do specialty coffee in local franchise, uh, such as uh, Starbucks Reserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that is a big change. So nowadays, most of uh, people who are doing coffee, they saying they are doing special coffee, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, they're just using the term. Yeah, just because they can. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it is a kind of uh, uh, difficulty about that thing. What is special coffee? Uh, and that is uh, my main concern nowadays. Mm-hmm. And. Mm, more than 80 percent, uh, 80 point, that is special coffee. So I cannot say that is not special coffee, what they are saying. And so this is uh, one of the difficulty in Korea. Yeah. yeah. And it's your task and a challenge to communicate yeah. the message, what yeah. specialty is and the value. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, I really like the the selection of panelists here today because we, uh, we are all from very different regions. But uh, after the last hour, we kind of all realize that we have the same or very similar communities around us and uh, how coffee is very universal all around the world, whether it's producing country or a very trendy city or a very dense populated city or a small town in, uh, in, in France. So uh, that's, that's like to me personally one of, the, one of the best things about coffee is that how it connects people of different ages religions uh, and historical backgrounds. So uh, I'd like to thank, thank you to all of you for, for joining us today. Please, again, big applause for Carolina, Yinho, mm-hmm. Pierre, Louise, and Ralph. <laughs>